Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Capital Watch program for Friday, March 15th, our weekly look at legislative developments in Jefferson City. And joining us this week is Mike Grote, MSBA's governmental relations consultant. And Mike, we're now in spring break for the legislative session, kind of the halfway point of the session. Uh, what's your overall evaluation of the session so far? Uh, Every legislative year is, is so much different than, than the year before, and, and this year you had the dynamic of uh, a large number of new freshmen coming in, you had some folks transitioning into the Senate from the House, and you spent a lot of the first part of the year, everyone getting comfortable, trying to figure out their role, getting through the committee process, and I think we saw that with some bills taking a little bit longer to get through uh, those basic committees, especially in the House, than we have seen before. And so some of those changes have uh, have made the session a little bit slower, but it's starting to pop. Here in the last couple of weeks, you've seen the Senate really begin to come together and, and start passing legislation through the, uh, the Senate floor, Senate chamber, and moving stuff over to the House. And you're seeing the House recognizing that and starting to pick up some of their effort as well. Uh, Mike, one of the major actions the Senate took this past week was passage of a big tax cut bill. Tell us how that came about. Sure, uh, Senate Bill 26 by Senator Will Krause is a piece of legislation that I think came about in large part uh, by what we've seen happen in, in our neighboring states. So you've seen Kansas pass something, something very similar to this uh, in recent year. And so this is kind of a, a piece of legislation that was designed to help us be more competitive and attract jobs, uh, especially on the western side of the state, and, and, and deal with Kansas's uh, legislative package they've put together. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's take a look now at some debate on the Senate floor on that issue. This is Senator Paul Lavota of Independence, and he was arguing against the tax cut bill. So let's take a look at that right now. We can't fund our foundation formula. We, we, uh, the tuition for all of our higher education has gone up. We, we, we have a proposal to cut the circuit breaker on the most poorest of our uh, citizens because we can't balance our budget. So we've done that. We've done that. We've cut revenue to where it has reduced this state government. And now this bill does it faster, faster and quicker. And there's a race to the bottom that we're going to win against Kansas because we're going to go right to the bottom. I can't believe that what has happened in the last decade as we cut revenue, we cut revenue, and then we have the gall to say things aren't working right. We need to change. Well, this is just doing more of the same. It's not a shift in philosophy. If we are 48th in growth in the state, it may have something to do with the fact that we're 47th in tax burden and that we don't have the schools, the roads, the infrastructure to build jobs. And uh, Mike, unfortunately, Senator Lavota's uh, argument did not carry the day. That bill passed easily in the Senate, didn't it? It did. Uh, you saw after, after much debate, as we've seen in the Senate, we've seen the Senate actually go uh, quite late on a number of, of issues this session, actually thoroughly debate them. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, this vote came out almost directly on, on party line, um, very, very close to. Uh, the, the only dissenting vote you had from the Republican side of things uh, was Senator David Pierce, who, who voted against the legislation. But the big issue was how much does this actually cut from the budget? And conservative estimates have it as, as low as around $600 million. The high estimates have it closer to a billion dollars, which are going to have to be cut from Missouri's budget. And when you're looking at a, a discretionary budget that we have of only about eight and a half to $9 billion, uh, that's a significant cut uh, to the revenues in the state. And some of that's going to be immediate. Uh, approximately $400 million would have to be cut from the current uh, FY14 budget, which is being written in the, uh, in the legislature right now. Uh, so, Mike, now the bill goes to the House, and there's considerable support in the House for it, isn't there? Uh, there is a lot of support, and so what we'll see is the, the bill comes out of the Senate, it goes to the House. They're in the process of, of referring those bills and, and getting them into a third timeline process. So as soon as we come back from spring break, uh, I would expect it to be referred to committee and, and have a hearing fairly quick. And uh, before April, I would expect to see uh, this bill you know, make, it, make it through the process. Another issue that we uh, have been working on throughout the session, Mike, has to do with the Sunshine Law mm -hmm. and keeping some school safety records confidential and some provisions of that law expired uh, at the end of the year. Where do we stand on that now? Sure. You know, this is a piece of legislation we've had for the last couple of years, and we always seem to meet resistance either uh, from other organizations that, that felt the need to keep those records open to the public. Um, 
events in the last year have, have clearly shown that uh, security issues in schools is extremely important and uh, we've had legislation both in the House and the Senate has has gone through those processes has crossed chambers and there's and there's quite a bit of support um, this year for making sure that we get those sunshine law uh, changes made uh, to protect the ability of, of a school um, to keep secure those security plans that, that they have. Do you feel like that issue may move after spring break some? I, I, there's so much support for this issue right now. It, it will definitely move this year. I feel very confident we're going to be uh, able to get that passed this year, which will be which will be good for everyone. You mentioned the budget for the next fiscal year, and uh, where do we stand on that now? Sure. Um, you know, the budget is fitting right into the timeline that, that it typically does. Um, even though spring break is a little bit later this year than it has been in years past, um, the budget this past week we were able to complete through the committee process. So essentially that's a, a extremely long markup process in the House. All the appropriation committees report the bills in, then the budget takes over full review and they go through it line by line and, uh, and do amendments. And so that actually concluded uh, this past week uh, on Wednesday evening and those bills have been referred. Uh, back to the House floor and, and we will go to the budget um, first thing probably when we return from spring break and the, the goal is to have the budget done in the House that first week, get it sent over to the Senate and uh, the Senate will be able to start their process probably the first week of April. And what's the outlook for school funding within that budget? Uh, we've been fortunate that the uh, school funding has been it, uh, fortunate in that we haven't been cut. Uh, there's there's not considerable increases there, uh, but we've been able to to maintain uh, funding from previous years with a little bit of bump, and uh, we're we're hopeful, hopeful that will continue the rest of the way through. Another issue that's uh, gained a lot of attention during the session so far, Mike, is uh, legislation that would assign grades to school buildings. Where do we stand on that? Sure, that was legislation which uh, originally came through in, in the House. And uh, there was a lot of discussion as to making sure that uh, schools were graded on uh, how well they were, they were performing. And it became very clear that this was something that uh, DESE was already putting in place, that they plan on putting in place moving forward. And we were able to work with members of the House Education Committee uh, to show them that, that um, putting a grade on the school and not evaluating all the things that go into making that grade uh, would be detrimental both for the students, both for the, the, the educators as well as uh, for the schools themselves. And so we were able to actually have each individual section uh, is assigned a percentage um, and, and is assigned a grade the each individual items as opposed to a cumulative grade at the end. So there will be multiple grades under the legislation right now, is that correct? Under the legislation right now there will be multiple grades uh, based on, on each level of performance as opposed to one cumulative grade that isn't necessarily taking into um, account the very positive things that are going on in that school building. Another issue that we've worked on for and supported for quite some time, uh, Mike, has to do with the prevailing wage and mm -hmm. how it impacts school construction projects. Where do we stand on that one? Sure, there's actually a couple of prevailing wage issues that are going on on um, this legislative session. So there's our issue, which we've supported for a number of years, for the uh, the prevailing wage for uh, public it's public buildings of, of construction, and so that's moving along this year. At the same time, we actually have a, a more comprehensive prevailing wage uh, reform bill change is also going on at the same time. So both those uh, those items uh, are receiving support in the House and the Senate. And there's this this conversation of you know rural Missouri, uh, outstate Missouri shouldn't be tied to uh, the cost that we have in St. Louis and Kansas City and those other uh, large concentrated areas. And everyone has finally been able to to recognize the value in that and the cost that it's having on on schools. And that those le those pieces of legislation are moving along. Well, Mike, when the legislature resumes after spring break, uh, they'll really head into the home stretch uh, toward the May adjournment. What can we look for in the next few weeks when they come back? Well, you're going to definitely see a, a picking up of the process. And over this, this first few weeks, um, the House has been getting their footing about them, and they've only passed uh, about 15 to 20 pieces of legislation, which is uh, highly abnormal uh, for, the, for the House. And that's actually a body that can move much faster than the Senate, uh, simply because of the, the way the procedures of the House move. So I would expect when the House returns that, that we'll see a, a, a quickening of their pace. A number of pieces of legislation will begin to move uh, through the House, and the Senate's already done a lot of the hard lifting on complicated issues for them. So uh, once we come back, the pace will quicken up and the budget will get done and, and uh, session will continue as, as it has in years past. 
And during this spring break period, Mike, this is a great opportunity for our members to meet with their legislators when they're back home in their districts, isn't it? Uh, yes, uh, you know, this is, this is a perfect time to catch them at home, to discuss with them the issues that we know now, we now know uh, are going to be in front of them, some of the issues that they're going to be dealing with once they uh, come back in another week. And, uh, and begin to deliberate on, uh, on those items. So this is the perfect opportunity uh, to talk to them, make sure that our issues are, are addressed and, and, and known. All right, Mike Grote, thanks a lot for being with us. Thanks we appreciate it. And we thank you for joining us for this edition of MSBA's Capital Watch. We will not have a program uh, next Friday because of the spring break. We'll be back with you with another edition of Capital Watch in two weeks. And of course, we'll be keeping you up to date on legislative issues during the second half of the session through our Legislative Voice newsletter and our daily blog on the front page of the MSBA website. Thanks a lot for joining us and we hope you join us again for our next edition of MSBA's Capital Watch.